Okay, guys, now we move uh, to our second part of our uh, today's presentation, and that's uh, the basically uh, deep diving into um, our first model that we would focus on, which is the discrete phase modeling or DPM. So basically, in discrete phase modeling, uh, what happens is, in here, you are dealing with uh, discrete uh, droplet size or bubble size um, uh, secondary phase inside your continuous phase. So basically discrete phase model goes back uh, to the method that we discussed if you remember in our, one of our first sessions that was you have um, uh, Lagrangian modeling. So basically in here the secondary phase is considered a Lagrangian model meaning you have your primary phase as a continuous fluid and your secondary phase as discrete particles now these particles could be droplets the, uh, could be um, um, uh, bubbles and so on, or even could be solid particles so the workflow in here is that you solve the continuous phase flow field meaning your primary phase your continuous phase is being solved as usual using our five equations okay and um, uh, there's nothing changed for that but for the second phase what we will do is we will calculate the particle trajectory because remember that those are discrete particles, right? We will calculate particle trajectory based on the external forces on each individual particle. Once we um, uh, uh, predict the trajectory, we will update our continuous phase source terms and then uh, repeat this process for every single time step where we uh, we should also mention that discrete phase volume in dpm should preferably be less than 10 percent so this is a really discrete phase literally a discrete phase meaning your secondary phase should not be more than 10 percent of your uh, volume so the dpm theory works like this you have your particle moving between the cells and remember you still have cells why you have cells because uh, you're still solving for your uh, continuous phase as is right so we are still solving our continuous phase since we are solving our continuous phase um, we should have mesh and we should have cells but our secondary phase is basically moving as uh, discrete particles between these cells and all we do we predict this trajectory of movement the way we predict that trajectory is um, basically uh, going back to our traditional classic f equal to ma equation so if we write down M f equal to ma it would look like something like this your uh, uh, acceleration equals basically three different types of forces so these forces are external forces acting on the uh, particle which basically determines its trajectory one is your drag force the drag force is the primary force that is being applied from your continuous phase on the particle the second one is of course your gravity if you have gravity force and that's being applied on your continuous phase and the secondary phase regardless the third one is your additional forces these are any other forces that might exist in the system this could be a pressure gradient rotating references brownian motions so on so forth so what you do is you calculate basically in each single time step you calculate these three external forces on every single particle and once you do that you can calculate the uh, acceleration and of course the trajectory of movement and again this is being done for every single 
particle in your system. Now, we have solved our continuous phase using our five equations as is. Then we used F equal to MA to solve for our particles and find the trajectory in the system. Now we uh, we have basically solved two separate systems and uh, so far what we have explained is it is called one-way coupling meaning we only uh, assumed the fluid phase influencing the particles via external forces right via drag forces turbulence so on and so forth but we did not consider particle phase effect on the gas phase this one-way coupling is of course uh, simple it's easier to solve quicker to solve and it's actually very practical and accurate enough when your um, secondary phase is very discrete meaning uh, less than 10 percent three four five percent or the primary phase has some sort of flow regime is so strong that is the effect of the secondary phase on the primary is basically negligible. The second method, the more advanced method, is basically a two-way coupling. In two-way coupling is basically, uh, as you could imagine, fluid phase influence particles via drag and turbulence, and particle phase influence the fluid phase we are source term of mass, momentum, and energy. Remember, you always had in your Navier-Stokes equation um, a so uh, different source terms of mass, momentum, and energy, right? Now, in two-way coupling, we use those sources uh, to basically put the uh, effect of particles on your continuous phase these effects could have many different forms they could be particle heating and cooling they could be droplet evaporation they could be droplet boiling or even surface combustion of the droplets remember the most obvious example is internal combustion engines you are injecting fuel particles into the hot air so you are both dealing with droplet evaporation and surface combustion on the uh, surface of your droplets and that's uh, those are basically the effect of your particle on your continuous phase so there are different particle types that we can uh, we can employ while using ANSYS and this is a, uh, a little bit ANSYS specific uh, depending on what type of simulation you're running depending on the type of the models that you are using and depending on your physical models and the needs of your physical models you can use either of these uh, methods uh, so either of these uh, um, particle types the first and the easiest one is an inert particle so for an inert particle basically what you have is um, only heating and cooling so nothing else it's just heating and cooling uh, there is no breakup there is nothing else for droplets if we are assuming droplets it has heating evaporation and boiling so here uh, if you notice we have made it more difficult it's it's not anymore only just heating and cooling it has evaporation and boiling as a, a, as well then the most complex one basically the most complex particle type is uh, combusting particles so in combusting particles what happens is you have heating you have swelling you have heterogeneous surface reaction and again going back to the example the most obvious example of this is your uh, internal combustion engines in which you're injecting fluid particles into the system and once you do that you're dealing with all sorts of phenomena uh, from heating to cooling to boiling to surface reaction and you can consider and you can simulate all those if you uh, select 
uh, combusting particle as your particle type in the ANSYS. Once we, uh, once we chose our particle type, now we have to see what happens to that particle. There are different scenarios that could happen to your particle and uh, most of those scenarios uh, uh, I mean those scenarios are divided in two uh, parts one the um, particle wall interaction so that's the uh, fate of your particle as we say the fate of the particle uh, once it uh, reaches to the wall the second um, type is what happens uh, what's the fate of your particle inside uh, your system so the particle wall interaction could have three different fates. It could be escape, it could be reflect, it could be trap. So in escape, what happens is the particle basically escapes through the wall. Now that could be intentional. For example, you have a porous wall. That could be unintentional due to um, physical errors, due to numerical errors, so on and so forth. Regardless, that's one of the fates that could happen to your particle. Then you could have reflect. In reflect, basically, is uh, it is as if uh, an array of uh, light hits the mirror. And the particle bounces back, reflects from the surface. Then the last one is trap. In here, the particle, as soon as it reaches to the surface, it doesn't pass through, it doesn't reflect, it just sits there. And we call that trap. Again, trap similar to um, escape could be intentional and could be uh, unintentional. So these are the three fates. But there are also more general fates of the particle that they could happen inside the domain as well. You have escaped. We already discussed that. Basically, the particle uh, terminates at your flow boundary. And um, um, most often, this is intentional. And this termination of escape could be through the outlet, could, could be through the wall. The other one is uh, the fate is called incomplete. So here, the trajectories were terminated with the maximum number of allowed number of time steps was exceeded. So basically, if you have 10 time steps, and the system follows the particles and predicts the trajectory successfully for 10 time steps, then it stops because um, just your time steps are done. So it's basically an incomplete particle. And why we call it incomplete? Because basically nothing happened to that particle. It just stopped in the middle of the flow. And it, this is unphysical. And if you have uh, too many significant number of incomplete particles, uh, you basically have to revise the number of particle, number of time steps, or your system because uh, that's an unphysical condition. It could be trapped. Again, we explained this. The trajectories terminated the flow boundary where the trap condition is set. So basically, they trap on the boundary. You can have evaporated, which basically uh, the trajectory is such that uh, the particles have been evaporated somewhere along the way and the trajectory will not be followed uh, anymore. And then we have aborted. In aborted, the trajectories are those that fail to complete. So there's no, you, you lose track of the particle. And why we lose track of particle, there is no specific reason for it, but mostly it is because of uh, numerical or Ronda further. So they, we basically lose the particles to our own errors in the system. Now, we talked about the particles. Now the next part is we talk about the origins of those particles because if you want to have particles in the system, inevitably you got to have um, some sort of particle generation system, right? You, you should have some sort of uh, injection in the system. So there are different injection definitions in the system, but uh, in ANSYS specifically, you can define an injection point without actually having a physical thing in there. So it could be, uh, you don't need to put an actual um, geometry of a nozzle in there. Although, 
if you are analyzing the nozzle you have to do that but if you just want to have some particles uh, injected in your system without analyzing the actual nozzle you can do the analysis by putting an imaginary injection point in the system which uh, the droplets or the particles rather we say are generated at those points for injection definition you need the particle type basically the inert the droplet uh, or the com combusting particles then you can have the material so which means what uh, what is the physical material of the particles that are being injected is it water is it oil is it fuel or what is it then you can have you should also define the initial conditions of that injection point now let's look at the options that we have in answers for our uh, basically injection points there could be different types of injection points defined in answers uh, basically you have a you can have a single injection points in single injection points what happens is um, basically uh, you have one imaginary point in space that your particles are being injected from there uh, with a specific velocity and with specific particle density or um, uh, another word particle density basically means number of particles per second so you need or your mass flow rate if you may say okay so that in single injection point there is one imaginary point that our particle are just being generated at that point then you can have the group injection point in a group injection point you have particle streams that are injected along the line so imagine if this point which my cursor is is one injection point one single injection point the group injection point is an array of those single points in one line that are injecting particles uh, with of course same characteristics meaning same velocities same uh, mass flow rates so on and so forth so this is basically a group of single uh, particles then you can have cone injections in here you can see the cone injections so cone injection is uh, basically a mashup of single and group in a sense that it's similar to single injection because they are being injected from one point okay so that's the similarity of the cone to the single but it's different from single and similar to group because you're not injecting just one particle at any given time at any given moment you are injecting a number of particles just same as the group but the difference that differentiates the cone uh, injection system with single and group is that you are actually injecting in a conical manner meaning you're injecting uh, with an angle so you can define angles for it and this is very important and uh, actually cone injection is uh, one of the most important one of the mostly used injection points uh, injection setups analysis because imagine you can basically replace any conical nozzle with it with this cone injection point and that would save you a lot of time of course if you don't want to simulate the nozzle itself right if you want to simulate the nozzle itself you have to make the whole geometry here and the geometry i've put in here is just for demonstration purposes in actual cone the whole the all of the trajectories are injected from one single point next one is surface in surface particle streams are injected from a surface so in here for example if you have uh, a, a geometry and you want to have your injection from one of the surfaces of that in uh, that geometry uh, homogeneously you will use surface injection so in surface injection what happens is uh, from the center of every single cell one stream of particles are being injected so this is very useful when you want to have injection from the whole uh, um, surface of your uh, basically uh, uh, geometry at the end 
you have the file injection so in the file injection uh, you basically it's a um, mixture of all of them you can define different injection points in different points and um, uh, uh, all in one text file with the coordinates and the velocities and mass flow rate and just attach it to the answers so a summary of uh, what we discuss in discrete phase models it's easy to use it's clear and simple in physics of course because you're just following the trajectories but remember the uh, uh, restriction is that uh, the volume fraction should be less than 10 percent and particle tracking can be used for a variety of purposes for um, in here uh, we will see in our example it's um, basically you can use ANSYS to sim to visualize all the particles and their trajectories now we move to our th third part third section of our course which is our free surface modeling